Hello, good morning. Hey, you know, there's going to be less information on the internet regarding uh, precision bearing work. So you kind of have to dig a little bit deeper. But I thought I could run through a few things, uh, kind of uh, add to the last video. Hey, and I hope you're all doing good. I tell you what, it's pretty crispy outside, but it's nice and warm in here. I think that's why I like hanging out. Okay, um, let's have a look at a diagram um, for the spindle bearings on a tool and cutter grinder. Okay, and it's... Uh, <clears throat> really nice to have diagrams. Now, this here is uh, the Cincinnati, and it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a neat uh, spindle design. And here's the standard work head like I have. And uh, in the same casting, they, uh, you can, um, add a extension spindle or have two extension spindle but they show <clears throat> the uh, the extension spindles without wheels and all that stuff so it's easier to see let me hold that right there let's see okay so now on this side here is two separate angular contact ball bearings uh, likely uh, mounted back to back, okay? And and they go up against the shoulder here, and they go up against the shoulder on the housing, and they're, reta they're retained by a nut um, on the shaft, shoulder on the shaft, nut on the shaft, and it's just solidly retained. Um, out, you know, the outer race and inner race. Now, over here... It's a little bit different. Now, this is a unit um, angular contact bearing, but it's single piece with um, uh, two balls, you know, two races. So this one is fastened to the shaft, but it's allowed to float in here from uh, heat expansion. And this is actually the flat belt pulleys uh, coming up the, the middle here. So I, I point this out that it's just kind of an interesting design and it's typical. This is actually quite heavy duty for a grinder. I forgot they were like this. And another thing, now the later grinders um, are grease packed. You know, there's grease uh, lubricated for life. And what that means is the life of the grease. And I want to point out that uh, grease for these kinds of uh, bearings, we'll just kind of go to the different ones here. Try to keep my shadow out of it, I guess. And uh, hold on, let me get the light over a little better. That's probably a lot better, isn't it? Okay, so this sense allowed to float with that unit bearing. And uh, the Monarch 10 double E laid this very much like this. Uh, it's, it's got some spacers spacing these apart. And the jig board does that too. Um, it gives it a lot more um, rigidity. <clears throat> That's not necessarily needed here because this is really, you know, high speed. Um, okay, for heat expansion, um, the unit bearing is allowed to float. And uh, the grease life, um, shelf life for, for ultra filtered grease is like five years. So you take a you take these grinders, um, like from the 1950s when they started grease packing them. That you know uh, the grease is you know what 70 years old. So the bearings are going to fail on on grease pack bearings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'll go over here. Now this old grinder here. 80 years old, and see it has oil lubrication. And I doubt if the bearings uh, have ever been replacing this thing. And uh, 
I don't know, they're a little bit noisy, but it, but it leaves a good finish. You can see the oil cups there. Now, the Monarch 10 E, this is the later one here, and uh, it's, it circulates oil. Here's your oil level. And so the uh, bearings are oiled. Drink of coffee, I was getting hoarse. So let's see, I'm going to go back over here <laughs> and grab this bearing. So, um, this uh, uh, Monarch 10 E has two bearings like this with uh, a spacer. It'd be one like that, one like that, <clears throat> mounted back to back with a nut holding those two together. Then at this end, it has that unit type. Uh, annular contact double row bearing that's allowed to float just like the cutter grinder okay and then this one's uh, <clears throat> oil too and this is a 1951 machine and uh, I doubt if this spent bearings have been replaced okay now this is a hard edge bearing and uh, they're grease packed and <laughs> they, uh, their uh, lifespan is just about up, if, if it's not up. So the reason you can't grease these bearings from the outside is because you have to have a controlled amount of grease in this type of bearing. You just can't pump it in full of grease because the bearing will get too hot and probably the, K, uh, the uh, what is it, kind of a composite material cager will fail. So, uh -huh. so you have to replace them. Now on a Monarch 10 double E that needed spindle bearings, I would find another Monarch 10 double E. Okay, that's my opinion because there's some real problems. <clears throat> and replacement bearings is going to be in the thousands of dollars. So if I was going to knock this spindle out, and, and it'd be the same with a hard inch, I'd, I'd put um, something, whatever, I, I'd go something up. I'd do the number one uh, here. And I put a mark on it, probably with a junkyard ink pen rather than a Sharpie. Mark it back there. And uh, you take the uh, crap <laughs> nuts and stuff loose here and off. Then you take these, uh, this retainer plate. The hard inch has this too. And then you take a lead hammer <clears throat> and you're going to have to knock it out. And that's going to cause scratches on the shaft, scratches on the housing that you're going to have to dress and get all that stuff clean. But the real important thing is to make a mark because inside that machine, this bearing's going to be facing like this, see? And it's going to be up against the uh, um, spindle back of the spindle and the high spots are on the back so when you when you knock the thing out as soon as you can get to these bearings you also mark them with there and try not to spin them or anything and then you want to mark the inner race too index that inner race Okay, so you, you pull all that stuff out. And uh, the hard part is um, <laughs> not messing stuff up too much, okay? Now, this is where people screw up. And I'm going to give you this tip. You can do it if you want to. <laughs> but um, to put this thing back together... You're going to heat up the bearings, and, and I'm going to give you a, a, a tip that I learned from a, a high-dollar 
dirt bike builder. Let's say this is the back of the spindle, right? And so you put it like that so the thrust is like that. When you put that on, you're going to have to have a sleeve. Always have sleeves available in case it sticks. So you heat this bearing up, you can refrigerate the shaft, and the bearing should drop on. But there's something that happens. When the bearing starts cooling down, it will actually slightly lift. So put a weight on it and let it cool down like that. Take and wrap it up with that lint-free uh, rags like Kimberly Clark lint-free rags. You can get them from MSC and probably Granger or wherever. They're kind of weird, kind of, they're not, uh, <laughs> and they're expensive, <laughs> like everything. And also, you don't want to touch the bearings. Put gloves on. And you want to reduce time that you have uh, uh, the bearings exposed. So while this is cooling down, put a weight on it, wrap it up. Now over here, after you've cleaned all this stuff up, make sure there's no scratches or anything in there. The coolest way to do it is to get a heating element, like a 110 volt um, heating element, a U-shape. And you can prop that thing up. You can find them on eBay. They use them for food warmers and stuff in different lengths. I, about 35 bucks and up. And uh, about, uh, they have them in, you know, 500 watt, 1,000 watt. So you can prop it up with sheet metal like, like, like they are in an oven. And be careful, don't shock yourself or burn your place down. And I put moving blankets over, things like that, and let that heating element heat up the entire headstock. Uh, maybe 160 degrees would be okay. Then the first thing you do is you take the other bearing and... Uh, it, it'd be like this one. The hard inch takes two, same, same bearing. And you get it started. And instead of pounding this one in, get a piece of all thread and a plate and draw it in. Never pound on these. You, it'll, just, it'll shorten the life. It's, it's like there's been studies done. <laughs> no kidding. Okay. So, you push this bearing in, pull it in. And it'll be in there, and the headstock's hot. And you'll have the heating element out, of course. And then, you know, put the blanket over it, and, and maybe use those Kimberly Clark uh, lint-free rags. Kind of put over this. You know, try to keep dust out, minimize the exposure as much as you can. Then this burn will sit in there and it'll absorb the heat and expand, okay? Then, then you can take this assembly that uh, <laughs> looks a lot like that. Take the way off it. And then you can slide that into that hot casting. It'll just go boink. And then, then the tail of it will go through this one. Okay? And do all that without any pounding. Okay? <laughs> it's all a lot of fun. I just thought I'd give you some of those tips. I've learned them over the years from probes. And they all make sense. And they follow... Um, the directions in the Barden literature. When they print something, they mean it. Don't pound on bearings. Okay, have a good one. I'll be back with some more things. Oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna show you a couple things that I got done first. Okay, come on over here. I got a really nice setup 
now that I got the fit using the 50 taper on the on the horizontal milling machine to uh, mount the uh, 50 taper tooling here. Yeah, I can do all kinds of things with that. I got it's running out about a thousandth and a half, so I'm going to take this uh, scraping tool here and go, you know, carefully go over that taper and get that thing running true. Yeah, I got that done, and uh, yeah, this little lathe here, I <laughs> still make it a couple of parts on it, um, but I got to get the motor generator out of it. So I'm still kind of kicking things around and I hope you guys are doing good and having fun in your shop. I'm having a lot of fun and I hope you're not catching the flu or any of that crap. Got a, a local flu meter or something, you know, it comes on the internet and it's like up. So look out. Okay, bye.